Bengaluru makes headlines for all the wrong reasons yet again. In a protest march at Whitefield yesterday, nearly 8,000 people hit the streets protesting against the city's bad infrastructure. In fact, a recent study conducted by the Indian Institute of Science concluded that the city is gradually becoming unlivable. Amita Balachandra sent us the highlights of that report. Take a look. It is clearly bleeding Bengaluru because in a recent uh, report released by the Indian Institute of Science which is called Envis Technical Report 93, it talks about several issues like traffic bottlenecks, bad infrastructure, contamination of air, land and water. But there are five key highlights that I would like to point out here. First of all, uh, loss of green spaces in the city itself because there's been a 78% decline in vegetation and 79% decline in wetlands uh, and this of course is because of urbanization which has rapidly increased over the past uh, few years. Second of course is encroachment of natural drains and this the report highlights is because of construction of high-rise buildings and uh, which has uh, in turn altered the topography of the entire city. Uh, now talking about encroachment of uh, lakes we also have to mention that 54% of lakes in Be in Bengaluru have been encroached. So those are the uh, that's because of illegal buildings uh, and uh, other uh, problems uh, in the area. But out of the 54, 54% uh, of course has been uh, encroached. But the rest of it, the rest of the lakes uh, which are remaining are also toxic. Now time and again we have mentioned this. We have brought this up on uh, Magic Bricks now about Belindur Lake Shubi, the Vartur Lake Shubi, all of them have grown toxic. So those are the two things. Then of course there has been a decline in groundwater table and according to the report this has been seen in the maximum, uh, this has been seen maximum in urbanized areas like Whitefield and other IT concentrated areas. There's also been a land growth, uh, an increase in land growth of uh, about 925% since 1970. This of course brings us to the point where there, there's been an increase in population which of course has resulted in urbanization that has risen by 125%. So these are the key highlights. This of course makes us question the governance system uh, in, uh, in the state itself and how uh, ineffective it is really. But uh, the key takeaway of the research, uh, out of the entire uh, research, uh, the key takeaway of course is that there is no planned expansion and this is the major reason this is happening. So, which again brings us to a very pertinent uh, question about whether Bangalore is slowly, it's gradually becoming an unlivable city. Amata Balachandra for Magic Bricks now. And to give us more perspective on this, we have the man behind that research report, TV Ramachandra, scientist at the Indian Institute of Science, uh, joining us live on the phone line. Mr. Ramachandra, thank you so much for joining us here on the news on Magic Bricks. Now, talk to us. How bad is the situation? What are some of the key problems in Bengaluru right now? Well, good evening to everyone. See, the Bangalore is facing the severe crisis of the, the pollution, apart from the, the encroachments. See, when we look at the Bangalore growth, I call this as an unplanned urbanization. That means urbanization has happened without any planning, which is evident from the concretization. In the last four decades, there is a 925% increase in the concrete area. We have lost the vegetation and the water bodies. If you look at the air, what we breathe is contaminated because of the higher level of greenhouse gases in the air. So when I look at air, water, and the land, Everything is contaminated. So as a Bangaloreans, you know, we allowed the growth in Bangalore with the utmost good faith. Today, the contaminated air, water, and the environment is the, we and our children have to pay for a price for that. And also, if you look at the Article 21 of the Indian Constitution, we are supposed to enjoy the clean air, water, and the environment. Now we are deprived of that. So now I demand the government to intervene immediately and see that Bangalore is put back at the, the, as it was in 70s. The solution to the Bangalore is the decongest and decontaminate Bangalore. We need to decongest. That means it is essential to move away some of the utilities to the other districts in Karnataka, which is not developed as much as the, the, some of the mega cities in the country. So we need to do that on priority. When we do that, naturally we can balance the growth in Bangalore. 
And uh, when you look at the water, water, there is an acute shortage of water in Bangalore today, apart from the contamination. See, we get a water from Kaveri River, and 40% of the water resources is met from the groundwater resources. Now, since these lakes are fed with the untreated sewage and effluence, the underground resources are also getting contaminated. At, uh, at the one end, and other end, there is a, the, because of the over exploitation of the groundwater resources, we are also have to go deeper and deeper to get the water. The, some of the locations like KR Puram Whitefield, so we go, uh, we have gone as deep as 1,000 to 1,500 feet. In that uh, in such situation, even the natural geological strata has the fluoride. That means in addition to the contamination because of the sewage and effluent, we have the contamination because of the fluoride since we have gone so deep, which clearly shows that we have surpassed all the thresholds of growth, the acute water, the poor air quality, and our children don't have the open spaces to play, or even our elders have the place for the recreation. So this clearly shows that we have surpassed the growth. This is enough. I think we need to demand the government that give a better environment and better uh, clean air to our children. Uh, Mr. Uh, Ramachandra, the, also the, 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 the levels of importance is mainly because, uh, you know, it is the IT capital of the country. You know, the levels of urbanization are not going to recede anytime soon. It's only going to keep going up further, isn't it? Uh, and also you're talking about poor governance. I was arriving at that point. Uh, you know, how much of a planning or you know, what do you think that needs to be done you know, in terms of potential solutions uh, that the government uh, should be uh, taking up at this point in time? Where is the governance? There is no governance. This clearly shows there is a poor governance or uh, there is uh, no governance at all. See, putting everything in one place, the concentrated growth is, will never work in any part of the globe. So we should be cautious. We should distribute the, some of the, the industries in other parts of the country. So there is no point in having everything in Bangalore. So I, I think now is the time to reverse the migration. So if we want Bangalore to be healthy, we need to do that on priority. The, and I am sure that if the, the, if the government doesn't do it, at least Bangaloreans will start demanding and will see that uh, they try to get what they want, that is a clean air, water, and environment. Already in some of the places like Whitefield, people are agitated. You know, they are agitated not one or two days. Yes. There is a sustained agitation for the last six months. Yes. You know, the lakes in Bangalore has a froth and the fire. You know, the froth is because of the contamination, the sewage getting into the water body. The, they are enriched with the nutrient. You know, the nutrient, uh, uh, they are enriched with the nutrient like N and P. The N is a new, uh, nitrogen and P is a phosphorus which gets into the water when the sewage is let into the water body, untreated sewage yes. is let into the water body. Absolutely, Mr. Ramachandra. In fact, uh, we're just playing visuals of that uh, agitation of uh, Save Whitefield, uh, which took place recently, as you were talking. Looks like the Bengalurians will have to get together to find solutions if the government uh, doesn't. Thank you so much on that note for joining us here on the news and Magic Clicks Now.